Well, hi folks, meteorologist Michael Wilhite here with southernindianaweather.com. Want to bring an update on uh, what's going on down in the tropics. First off, just uh, a uh, tremendously devastating situation right now with Hurricane Irma uh, spitting on. And as you can see here, here's the current satellite loop over the past six hours. And uh, there's little old Irma. Uh, she ain't so little though. She's about 400 miles uh, wide. Very strong Cat 5. She has weakened just ever so slightly, but I, I do want to mention ever so slightly. Uh, she peaked with winds of 185 miles per hour and that and she actually is the strongest uh, for the longest time that we have ever recorded in the Atlantic uh, Basin. Uh, the strongest hurricane was actually I think Allen back in the 80s and uh, he had 190 mile per hour winds uh, but that didn't stay very long. In fact uh, typically you don't see that extreme wind for very long at all. Uh, it'll die off a little bit. Uh, Irma had 135, 100, excuse me, 185 mile per hour winds longer than 24 hours and that's just uh, record shattering she's 400 miles across uh, just looking at the wind extent uh, the uh, hurricane force winds extending from the center I go out about 115 miles this thing is just absolutely massive and unfortunately the track on this is going to take it uh, in a fashion that's uh, not going to be uh, very favorable unfortunately uh, if I put uh, let's uh, let me um, let me get an arrow on here. Uh, the track on Irma is going to go something similar to this, and that's of course very unfavorable for Florida. Now, as we get up here into Florida, things get a little bit more unknown, and so let's uh, sort of uh, maybe dive here into the data and talk about this just a little bit. Three hurricanes right now going on in the Atlantic. You got Irma right here. There's Hurricane Katia back here, and then Jose is on Irma's heel here. And so if we just look at Katia first, no threat to us. It will be a threat to uh, Mexico uh, as it, it comes on shore as a cat one or so uh, but uh, no threat really to the United States Jose of course behind Irma it looks to recurve out to sea as well we'll hope and pray that it stays that way but Hurricane Irma is the one that all eyes have to be on and this is uh, the latest path map as we have it from the National Hurricane Center we'll get some fresh updates out here in a couple of hours a fresh uh, path updated out but this is the latest path and notice uh, you know don't focus so much on the center line. That's the preferred track, but pretty much anywhere in this cone. That's what what we call the cone of uncertainty. And basically anywhere in that cone is where the hurricane could potentially go. Uh, of course, I'm with Southern Indiana weather primarily, and you notice the cone path even dives right into us now a little bit uh, with this latest uh, path that it's on. Uh, the remnants will move likely here somewhere into the Ohio Valley. Could bring us some rain next week, but the big story is going to be uh, the, the wave of destruction uh, that it, it leaves behind. Of course, uh, it moved through uh, Puerto Rico yesterday to the north of it. And of course, down here around uh, Baruba and uh, Antigua, uh, it literally just decimated some of those islands. Uh, and some of those islands, they've already had 10 deaths reported uh, that I have heard so far. And uh, literally one official with those islands said that 9 out of 10 buildings were just utterly destroyed. 90% uh, of the structures uh, on the island, gone. The eye wall passed over it, and well, that's what 185 mile per hour sustained winds will do. It's been gusting larger than 225 miles per hour. It, it's absolutely uh, ridiculous, really, here. If we take a look at the path on it, you notice you've got hurricane warnings here in red. So you've got the Turks and the Caicos, the Bahamas up here. Definitely going to be under the gun with this. The path is in this black line here, uh, and so this is the projected path. Again, anywhere in the cone is what we call the cone of uncertainty. So anywhere in that cone could be under the gun for this. Uh, you got some tropical storm warnings down here in your blue. Uh, hurricane warnings down here for Cuba as well. In the pink over here, you've got hurricane watches going on. Those will be upgraded to warnings possibly as soon as tomorrow, but watches have to be issued first when it gets closer to the time frame. That's whenever you'll see it. You notice it's uh, Saturday afternoon. That's when we're really going to start watching things. You see the projected turn here. How fast this starts to turn to the north is going to be the real deciding factor as to uh, really what's going on here. And so uh, basically what you've got going on in the upper levels of the atmosphere, a trough is digging down, a trough of 
uh, trough of low pressure here. And wow, I, I really uh, just didn't do that very well. Uh, but remember that winds rotate counterclockwise around a trough. So what's going to happen? Uh, as uh, Irma decides to continue on to the west-northwest fashion, eventually it's going to get close enough that it starts to feel the effects of this upper level low, and that low will then lift it north. So th there's big questions then. When does it lift north? Does it go uh, this way, does it feel the turn north a little faster and then start to curve in there because of the effects of the low wrapping around uh, sort of in a fashion similar to that? Or maybe does it take a more central or even more along the western coast? Well, really any of these are viable options, though the western coast uh, solution here is becoming a little less likely day by day. Models have really started to dial in on more of a route right directly up the middle of the peninsula now, unfortunately. So let me show you sort of what we are seeing with that. Um, <clears throat> first off, just uh, if you're wanting to get any of these models, all you got to do is go to tropicaltidbits.com. Uh, and Levi does a great job with his updates there. You could watch his videos as well. But if you click on current storms, there's a list of all the storms. And so you can look uh, right there at Hurricane Irma. You can see some of the modeling data are right there. That's what I'm going to show you if you wanted to get back to that on your own. Uh, so the hurricane models here, you can see that a large chunk of the actual hurricane models are, are trending this right towards either up the coast itself or just off of the shore. But the global modeling is a little bit different with that. There's the intensities and you can see by the time we get into the weekend, uh, you're still arriving here as either a five or a cat four, so it's gonna be very big. Uh, let's talk about what the GFS does first. Let me show you what the global models do. There's actually coming in some decent agreement on these models. And so here is the way the GFS does this. And you notice there we're starting to see the recurve up to the north just a little so slightly there you go and look right here well Miami let's just uh, let me just show you uh, where we're at here all right so there's this let me mark on here uh, Miami is sort of right in here direct hit virtually under the GFS uh, this would be the worst possible scenario you could get for Miami uh, literally the eye wall with possibly 150 60 170 mile per hour winds slamming right into Miami that that obviously is not what we want to see and then it takes it inward uh, right on the land and just sort of rides it up uh, goes into Georgia and you can see uh, the remnants then would come for us here uh, into the Ohio Valley before it starts to spin out that so for us in southern Indiana that would give us some rain next week with that let me back up though and let me show you where landfall is here with the GFS let me switch over to the euro and let me just show you that there's some actually remarkably similar similar agreements it's not perfect agreement but it's starting to dial in a little closer look at this the euro it takes it in 24 hour chunks so it's going to be a lot more jumpy than you saw with the GFS but watch this just a little bit more to the west landfall right here over the keys all right so the landfall on the euro is more uh, sort of right in here. Let me pin that on here for you. So whereas the GFS is right here, the Euro is more uh, maybe right about in here. That's still pretty good agreement. You're maybe 50 miles apart from each other, but that's still very relatively good agreement on the two most important of the global models on where this is going to strike. Southern Florida really under the gun with this. And then watch though, with the Euro is really the worst case scenario because with this, You've got the eye wall. It doesn't, the eye wall uh, would go maybe just to the east, just to the uh, west of Miami, and that might be better uh, for Miami, um, but not by much. You're still going to get slammed with winds, and watch this. Under the Euro solution, it literally just rides right up the peninsula, and so virtually everyone in the state of Florida could have this, and this is still a hurricane. We're talking it arrives on shore as a five, maybe a four, and it's still at least a cat one here as it rides up the state. So everyone in Florida under the setup could get hurricane force winds of some degree or another. This could be a potentially uh, devastating, catastrophic situation for Florida. I can't, I can't, uh, I can't uh, <clears throat> underestimate this. I don't want to be guilty of hyping up a storm, but if you're watching this from Florida and you're thinking, man, should I get out or not get out? Okay, let me just tell you. Get out, if possible. This is not your average, everyday storm. This is a monster. It's about 400 miles wide, and just look at this, all right? 
So this is the extent of the hurricane force winds. And look at this. The majority of the state covered in this. It's a storm the size of the entire state of Florida. If you've got the option to get out, folks, I really would. Remnants of this, by the way, then go up into Georgia. It's still a tropical storm as it goes into Georgia. And then it starts to spin out. Again, could bring some rain with it here to us into the Ohio Valley, where I forecast for as well. But uh, nothing like what we're going to see down there in Florida. Florida's going to get a massive amounts of wind and a fairly strong amount of rain as well. Canadian model. Just to show you, very similar kind of solution. Starts that northwestward jog there as well. Landfall, very similar to the other three. So there's really good agreement today among the big players in the global models that southern Florida is in the tip of this. And then it sort of rides right up. And then it, it does uh, go out to sea a little bit before making landfall South Carolina and sort of then spins out from there as well. Uh, the Navy's model, the NAVGEM. It's actually the most west of all these. It doesn't feel the effects of the trough and still after it comes over Cuba and rides along the spine. And then it would actually go right up the west coast of Florida. Uh, again, though, this would be a bad situation for all of Florida. All of Florida still feeling these hurricane force winds with that as well, no matter what. And then, of course, you know, it, it goes very similar. Pretty good agreement on these that the remnants possibly will come up into the Ohio Valley. So starting to see some confidence increasing for some rain for us next week here in southern Indiana. But I can't stress enough for you, this isn't going to be bad for southern Indiana. We might get a couple inches of rain out of this, and we may end up seeing uh, <clears throat> 10 to 20 mile per hour winds out of this. But the real story is going to be down in Florida, and this could be potentially catastrophic. Worth noting here that if you look at the GFS ensembles, uh, in pretty good agreement here, the black line is the mean of all of the, the different ensembles. An ensemble model is basically you take the regular GFS and you tweak the initial conditions just a little bit to account for the fact that we don't have the atmosphere perfectly modeled. And so you initialize it with slightly different conditions and it leads to a different scenario. You take the mean of that, you get the average of that in other words, and it kind of helps average out the errors. That's the idea behind an ensemble model. Right up the spine of Florida for that. Uh, and, and the GEPS, the Jeeps, this is the Canadian ensembles. Again, a very similar solution with that. So regardless of how this looks, we are, uh, we are headed, folks, for a pretty catastrophic situation. And again, let me show you Hurricane uh, Irma here uh, and the path map again from the, the uh, National Hurricane Center. Again, taking the path of that right up the spine uh, of, of Florida as well. Uh, the worst thing about it all, besides the winds, we already talked about the winds. <clears throat> You're talking 150, 160, even maybe 170 mile per hour winds as it strikes Florida and then decreasing the more it's on land. But by the time you get to the north tip of Florida, you're still 80 mile per hour winds. You're still category one. All of Florida gets hurricane winds under this under the way the thinking is right now. Storm surge could be the most devastating, especially for the coastal areas. You know, as if 170 mile per hour winds weren't enough. If you live in the coastal areas, look at this. This is predictions here for storm surge inundations. And yes, all all of Florida will get some storm surge for this. Those predictions will be done by the uh, uh, by the Hurricane Center as as uh, <clears throat> as the situation gets a little closer. This is where we stand on the predictions right now. But look at this: a possible five to ten foot storm surge. Think about that. You know, the average <clears throat> roof on a home is around 10 feet. So this could possibly be water up to the top of some homes if this is bright. Massive, massive storm surge possible with this. Bottom line, if you are on the coastal areas anywhere in Florida, get out. If you are further inland, uh, you know you're not going to get the storm surge off of this, but you definitely could get some flooding rains with this, you know, and you're certainly going to get the wind. So if you've got the option to leave, folks, I really would just leave. Uh, the rainfall with this, here's the way the GFS looks at the rainfall, and you can see just, you know, look at this, Miami getting almost 13 inches of rain down here and just massive amounts of rain. Uh, all of Florida gets a good drenching here, but... Um, pretty much all except for right here in the very panhandle area is about all that gets spared with it. Um, massive amounts of rain as you go up it though. For us here in the Ohio Valley by the way again as it spins out maybe an inch or two of rain at best the way things look right now. Doesn't look like a big rain maker for us. We could use a little bit of rain.
that'd be welcome for us. The big storm, uh, the big thoughts though, as as we head down here, and you can see just heavy, heavy, uh, copious amounts of precipitation as we go in here. Keep an eye on it. Uh, Hurricane Irma, just absolutely massive, and uh, she is coming. So if if you're in Florida, you just need to get ready, folks. Uh, make sure you've got your drinking water saved up for several days. Uh, much of Florida is going to be without power if this is right. Now, could this still turn out to sea? I suppose there's that possibility, but honestly, at this point, it's pretty slim chances that it goes out out to sea. Uh, more than anything, I think what you're going to see is that this will uh, just sort of eventually uh, curve and, and turn north, and it's going to go to Florida. Florida, you're going to be affected somehow by this. Even if you, even if the eye wall stays and goes right up the coast, you're still going to have hurricane force winds over a large chunk of the state. If the eye wall goes right up you, it's a worst case scenario and a massive damage swath. Either way, it's going to be a very impactful storm. Prepare for power outages for a long, long time with this, folks. Uh, that's the sad, unfortunate reality uh, that we are in right now. I'll try to have another one of these uh, videos for you tomorrow. Hopefully the path will get a little bit more clear. But, uh, you know, uh, pretty much as I said, folks, and let me just sort of draw it on here one final time as I conclude here. Uh, if I were... If I were looking at this, this is the most likely path as I see it right now. That's my thinking on this. And so if I were anyone in Florida, anyone in this area of Florida and Georgia needs to be prepared for some potentially devastating conditions with this. Georgia, you're not likely to get too much on the hurricane force winds, but it'll still be a tropical storm as it comes into you. You need to be ready, folks. More updates to come, so stay tuned.